اللہ ان اللہ یامرکم ان تؤدوا الامانات الى اهلها واذا حکمتم بين الناس ان تحکموا بالعدل ان اللہ نعم ما يعظکم به ان اللہ كان سميعا بصيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اطيعوا الله واطيعوا الرسول واولي الامر منكم فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِن كُنتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ رَبِّ اشْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَاحْلُلْ عُقْدَةً مِّن لِّسَانِي يَفْقَهُوا قَوْلِي اللَّهُمَّ رَبَّنَا أَلْهِمْنَا رُشْدَنَا وَأَعِذْنَا مِنْ شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ارحمنا بالقران العظيم واجعله لنا اماما ونورا وهدى ورحمه اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته انا الليل واطراف النهار واجعله لنا حجه يا رب العالمين امين Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in Islam assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh As you must be remembering we completed the translation and brief study of the first 57 ayat of surah an-nisa last night Now we are proceeding further the two ayat which I have just recited our most profound ayat of the quran regarding the fundamental principles of islamic state just as we read two ayat ayat number 32 and 34 they were most profound regarding the institution of family ayat number 34 says ar rijal qawwamun 'ala an-nisa bima faddala allah ba'dahum 'ala ba'din وبما انفقوا من اموالهم فالصالحات قانتات حافظات للغيب بما حفظ الله الى اخر الايه so in the same way these two ayat are very basic very fundamental regarding the structure of islamic state and in these two ayat we find that all the three pillars or the basic institutions they have been mentioned of an islamic state although the terminology used here is not of the modern political science these are general terms general words but if you analyze the ayat you find that all the three pillars of a state you know in a modern state we have three basic institutions basic pillars legislature on the one side executive on the other side and then the judiciary so you will find that these all three of these are being mentioned here and let me explain in the beginning the political system of islam is that of caliphate the first basic principle is that sovereignty belongs to allah not to any human being as individual or not to the nation or humanity at large collectively سروری زیبا فقط اس ذات بے ہمتا کو ہے حکمراں ہے ایک وہی باقی بتانے آذری ان الحکم اللہ للہ سورنٹی بلانگس ٹو ہم 
Now if sovereignty belongs to Allah, what remains for the humans? That is called khilafa, vaiherency. What is it? Whatever commands are coming from the real sovereign, you have to implement as such. You can't alter, you can't change them. Not even 100% of you can, do, can, can make any change in it. What to speak of 51%, majority or minority, absolutely irrelevant. What command is coming from Allah is to be implemented as such. Where there is no specific instructions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is amrukum. Now Allah has given this, this fear to you. وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورَا بَيْنَهُمْ Here you can have mutual consultation. Decide the matters. But till that time that the institution of Nabuwa, institution of prophethood was continuing, the Khilafah used to be personal and individual. The Nabi was the Caliph in his own person. That is why we find in the Quran, Hazrat Dawood a.s. was addressed, Ya Dawoodo, Inna ja'alna ka khalifatan fil ard. Here the pronoun is singular. O Dawood, we have declared you to be the caliph of earth. Inna ja'alna ka khalifatan fil ard. Because it's very logical. Allah is sovereign. And this person, this human being, he is Nabi, he is prophet. He has a direct communication with the real sovereign. The commands of Allah are coming to him. So he has to implement them. So he is the caliph in his own individual person. That is why singular pronoun used. Ya Dawood jalna inna jalna ka khalita fan fil ard. And this continued till such time that the institution of caliphate was the institution of nabuwa prophethood was continuing. This was the condition. That is why we find in in the hadith the Sahih of Bukhari, rahimahullah. كانت بنو اسرائيل تسوسهم الانبياء كلما هلك نبي خلفه نبي the community matters the political affairs of bani israel were in the hands of the prophets whenever a prophet died another prophet was in his place just as we know hazrat daud died he was the caliph and he was the prophet and after him hazrat sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam he is the he is the caliph and he is the prophet but now when this institution of prophethood has come to an end in the person of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now things are changed. This caliphate is now collective for the ummah. That is why now we find in Surah Al-Nur that the plural pronoun is used. وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّ كُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ It is not ka now, it is not one person. This Khilafat is now has become a collective affair of the Muslim Ummah as a whole. So these are the basic principles. And then, you know, they are the institutions. There must be somebody who has to look after the affairs of the state. You may call him the head of the state. You may call him anything. You may call him Caliph. But there should be a, an executive machinery to manage the affairs of the state. Then, you know, Ijtihad is to be continuously made. Legislation, this process will continue. New problems will arise and we shall have to solve them. So there has to be a legislature also. Then there has to be a judiciary also. So all these three basic principles and basic ingredients of a state, modern state, we can say that they are potentially present and mentioned in these two ayat. Inna Allah ya murukum an tuaddul amanat ila ahlihaf. The first instruction. Verily, O oh Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordains upon you that you hand over the trust to those to whom it belongs or to those who are worthy. Now what is the trust? When you are a community, you have to elect or select or somehow, you must have some caliph, some head of the state. You have to elect him by mutual consultation. Amrahum shura bainahum. Now this authority that you have as a vote, for example, I can say, this is the biggest trust of the community and of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your hand. Now if you are giving this vote to a person who is not worthy of it, so you are making khayana, you are not proving to be a means. So actually 
all these these things whatever offices whatever responsibilities are to be given to the people to manage the affairs of the community of the ummah so they these things should be given the offices the responsibilities these are the trust with you and you have to hand them over to people who are worthy of it inna allaha ya'murukum an tuaddu al-amanati ila ahliha who are who have the capability of making ijtihad who can be entrusted with the process of legislation in islamic state you have to select them or elect them whatsoever it is and who is going to be the head of the state you have to elect him or select him but you know this this your opinion that you give the vote that you give that is the biggest trust and you have to use it for the persons who have the capability and who are worthy of it in allah ya murukum an tuaddu al amanati ila ahliha now the second institution and that is judiciary wa iza hakamtum bayna an nas an tahkumu bil adl and when you are judging between the people any dispute any affair which has erupted and you sit in judgment whosoever you are whenever you are judging wa iza hakamtum bayna an nas between the people among the people an tahkumu bil adl you must judge with justice not no partisanship no favor special favors to anybody you have to cling to the justice principles of adl and qisb inna allah ni'am ma ya'idukum bi these are very excellent teachings and advices that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you because on this is based the structure of this of the state and what is state by the way when a society reaches a mature organization state stage it becomes a state as i told you what is society it's a collection of families now an organized society becomes a state and now you have to manage the affairs of that state and you have to have some legislature you have to have some some judiciary these are the two essential ingredients of that state in allah ya'murukum an tuaddu al-amanati ila ahliha number 1 number 2 wa idha hakamtum bayna an-nas an tahkumu bil adl in allah ni'am ma ya'idukum bi these are the best advices most excellent teaching that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you in allah kana sami'an basira verily allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever listening ever seeing Now comes the second ayah, and this is rather more profound. This is discussing the executive, the executive head. You may call him caliph, head of the state. Here in United States, you have the president, and so on. Or in the parliamentary system, it's the prime minister. So on, whosoever is there. Now, what is the sequence of obedience in Islamic state? Who are to be obeyed? يا ايها الذين امنوا اطيعوا الله واطيعوا الرسول واولي الامر منكم او يو هو بليف اور او يو هو بروفيس تو بليف هو كليم تو بليف اوبي الله اند اوبي دي ميسنجر اند دوز هو ار بليسد ان بوزيشن اوف اثورتي فروم امونغست يو ناو ذير ار ثري الله Rasul and ulul amr minkum. Now see how beautifully a differentiation has been made. The verb atiyu has been repeated twice, but not with the third. There could be two other forms. Atiyu could be taken out out of the bracket as a common factor. Atiyu Allah wa Rasul wa ulul amr minkum. Not to repeat again. Atiyullah wa Rasulah wa ulil amrin kum within the bracket. All the values are multiplied by the the value which is outside the bracket. Or it could be repeated all the three times. Atiyullah wa Atiyu Rasulah wa Atiyu ulil amrin kum. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has discarded these two modes of expression, and He has taken Atiyullah wa Atiyu Rasul wa ulil amrin kum. What does it mean? The itaah, the obedience to Allah. and messenger is absolute and permanent unconditional you have to obey them anyhow these are the two basic sources of islamic law 
fundamental sources of the Islamic law. Kitab and Sunnah as we call it. The book of Allah. That is in place of Allah now. And number two, the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. That is in place of Rasul. Atiullah wa atiur Rasul. And these two are fundamental. And these are permanent. You can't question the authority of Allah. And you can't question the authority of the Messenger. You can't have a dispute or a difference of opinion with Allah. And in the same way you can't have a dispute or a difference of opinion from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But for the third, this verb atiyu has not been repeated. There is some basic difference. Wa'ulil amri bin kum. And also, you obey the ulil amr who have been placed in authority. Now how have they been placed in authority? That is given in the first ayah. Inna Allah ya murukum an tuaddula manate ila ahliha. You select them, you elect them. But you know you should be honest and sincere. You should give these positions of authority to those only who are worthy of it. Who are capable to deliver, deliver the goods. Not to your relatives. Not to your tribesmen. Not to, to somebody who can do some personal favor to you. No. This is dishonesty. Insincerity to Allah and the Islamic State. So you have to give this amana to the people, to the persons who are capable of holding it, this position. Now when they are in the position, now you have placed them in authority. You have selected Abu Bakr as Khalifa. He was not appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nor he was nominated by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was by mutual consultations that the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they, they elected him. So actually now this is not Mamur bin Allah. Previously the Prophet who was Mamur bin Allah, he was the Caliph. You had to accept him anyhow. But now that institution of prophethood has come to an end in the person of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After him, no one is mamur bin Allah. No one can claim to be appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone, you know, derives his mandate or authority from the people, from the community. Because they have elected him. They have selected him. But now, from them, you can disagree. Number one, there must be Muslims. Ulul Amr min kum. What does it mean? Muslims can never accept from their hearts at least that they be governed by non-Muslims. Well, if they are compelled, if they have been captured, if they have been conquered, if they have been rendered helpless, it's something else. But a Muslim can never accept from the depths of the heart the authority of a non-Muslim. Ulil Amr min kum. He has to be from amongst you. He has to be Muslim. Not only the head of the state has to be Muslim. The legislators also can be only from Muslims. No non-Muslim can join the legislature of an Islamic state. Because the sources of the legislation are the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet. He believes in neither of them. So how can he be associated with the process of legislation and ishtihad? The process of legislation now in the modern Islamic state will be ishtihad. How can a non-Muslim be assigned this responsibility of ishtihad and legislating and, and deriving and inferring from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu he doesn't believe in them. So they have to be minkum. If you take this American system, the, the congressman, and your senators, they have to be Muslim. If this, is, if this becomes an Islamic state, may Allah do it. Then you know only Muslims. Head of the state, Muslim. President has to be Muslim. No non-Muslim can be associated. Non-Muslims will remain in an Islamic state a protected minority. They will remain a protected minority. They will not be equal citizens to the Muslims in the Islamic state. This is a very bitter pill to swallow. But we have to see to the reason, to the principles. This is the basic difference between Islamic state and the secular state. In a secular state, religion is just irrelevant to, this, to the affairs of the state. It's a private affair only. You can be a Hindu, you can be a Muslim, you can be a, you can be a Jew, you can be something else, you can be a Buddhist. Go to your synagogue, go to your mosque, go to your temple, go to anywhere you like. But regarding the affairs the collective affairs of the community and the state, there will be no reference whatsoever to any religion, to any revealed law,
to any revealed guidance. Nothing of the sort. But Islamic state is based on Islam. It's based on the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet So only those who believe in it can be assigned the offices and the positions of authority and only they can be assigned the responsibility of legislation. But now there can be a difference of opinion. Everybody had the right to differ from Abu Bakr. Everybody, every Muslim had, had the right to differ from Umar. Because Umar was not the prophet of Allah. He was not infallible. Abu Bakr was not a messenger of Allah. He was not infallible. And you know, there was a difference of opinion regarding the lands which were captured by the Muslims. The big, big lands, big countries, Syria and Iraq and Iran and Egypt. Now some of the, some of the uh, fellow Muslims, you know, and the companions of the Prophet, they demanded that this is Maleganima, this is Booty. Now divide it amongst us. You can keep only one-fifth to the state. For the state, one-fifth. And the four-fifth have to be distributed among people who were, who were fighting in the field. Hazrat Umar said, no. This is not Male Ghanima. This is Male Fe. And this will go totally to the Baitul Mal of the Muslims, collective. They will be owned collectively by the Muslim Ummah, not distributed. This would have become the, the biggest feudal system of human history, you know, a few thousand people. They conquered all these countries. This was the ishtihad of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala. But you know, there was a different opinion. Matter was discussed. A special committee was assigned. Five Sahaba from Aus, the tribe of Aus, and five from the tribe of Khadraj. They were formed into a committee. And then you, they consulted. And then they approved that ishtihad of Umar radiallahu ta'ala is correct. And then it was the consensus of the Muslims now. This, that is why there is a this differentiation of lands. This is Ushri, this is Kharaji. If a Muslim owns a land, piece of land, a farm, then it is Ushri. Only one-tenth or one-twentieth of the produce will be taken. Ushri. But if it is Kharaji, it is the collective property of the Muslim Ummah. It is not the personal property of any Muslim individual. Then you know, maybe 50%. Now they are tenants. Whosoever are, are working over there, they are tenants. They are not owners of that field. Or, or that farm or that piece of land. And they will pay even 50%. All will go straight. Kharaj. It is called Kharaj, not Ocean. So this is an example I gave you. If there, can, if there is some difference of opinion between you... And the people who are at the helm of affairs, what to do then? Where to go? If I am differing from the opinion of Abu Bakr, what to do now? He says, I have deduced this from Quran and Sunnah. I say, no, I differ from your opinion. I deduce in this way. My inference is this. Now, فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ Now, here, a common citizen of the Islamic State and the head of that state, they are at par. The decision will be given by Allah and his messenger. Because only the obedience to Allah and the messenger was absolute. What does it mean? Now it has to be decided by the judiciary whether which opinion is more correct, more near the spirit of the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet if you really believe in Allah and if you really believe in the last day, this is the best way to conduct your state, affairs of the community and state. And this is going to produce the best results. In the end you will find this is the best way. Now because in the early days of caliphate, this judiciary was not present over there as a different and independent institution. Let me tell you, first of all, during the days of the Prophet ﷺ, he was the caliph. He was heading all the, not only three institutions, but all the four institutions of the state. He was the head of the state, he was the caliph. If Hazrat Dawood was caliph, was not Muhammad ﷺ the caliph of Allah? 
he was the caliph because the commands of allah were coming to him then he was the legislator that is why we call him shari alayhi salam he had to interpret he had to interpret the wahi which is coming to him from allah and he had to make new fresh judgments then he was the chief justice also all the matters and disputes had to be settled by him and he was the commander in chief also all the four you know positions were held by whom by muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but gradually you know these institutions they got separated from each other in the days of hazrat ali we know that judiciary became independent because hazrat ali radhiyallahu ta'ala no filed a suit in the court of qadi shurah and you know his his case was dismissed because he could not produce any witnesses to his claim except the son and the slave and qadi shurah said no although we can't say that you are telling a lie but it's a law all muslims are equal in the eyes of law here you are not as the caliph of the state here you are appearing as a muslim a citizen judiciary is higher up and here you know whosoever is judging is a hakam tum bainan nas al tahkum bil adl now because the witness the testimony of a son or a slave who is owned by the person it is not acceptable if you have another another witnesses produce them and hazrat ali said no i don't have any other witnesses okay your case dismissed and it was against a jew and the jew accepted islam saying this you know that this is the condition of the state the head of the state his claim can be dismissed in the state so he became a muslim but you know these institutions now today by the process of social evolution and let us do justice to others also we owe this to the western nations they have developed these institutions of the state we muslims gave them the light from the universities of cordova and granada and toledo we passed the torch of knowledge and light to them and then we went to sleep these people worked the scientific development took place there this electricity was not invented by any muslim but we are using it this loud speaker these cameras not invented by any muslim we are using them in the same way these institutions they have developed in principle essentially all these things were given by the muslims these all things were given by muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to humanity at large as allama iqbal says har kuja bini jahan e rangobu aake az khakash be roye darzu ya ze nur e mustafa ura bahast ya hunuz andar talash e mustafa ast wherever you find something good something noble from which you know the seed of desire you know it 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 grows up you will see either this light has been borrowed from muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam or man is still proceeding and trying to reach where muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had taken the humanity 1400 years ago har koja bini jahan e rangobu aake az khakish broyad arzu ya ze nur e mustafa ura bahast ya hunud andar talash e mustafa so this judiciary now now you know there is the congress legislation vested with them he is the executive the president is the executive head the executive machinery is under him and he has the judiciary and he has the constitution if the executive head or the executive machinery is doing something wrong you go and knock the door of the judiciary the superior courts so this is the system that has evolved in the west and let me say here at the highest level of evolution today stands the american constitutional system the british parliamentary system lags much behind there's duplicity head of the state is someone else head of the government is someone else how can the powers be balanced between the two head of the state there the king or the queen is just nominal symbolic nothing to do with the affairs of the state all the authority is in the hands of the prime minister but if we imitate their and we are imitating their example what happens in pakistan either the head of the state is rendered to this to the position of chaudhry fazl e ilahi 
and then people have to demand he must be released from the presidential palace. So he is in prison over there. Or you know, the president becomes the Aul Haq, or uh, who was this fellow? Ishaq Khan, he can dismiss the prime minister, elected prime minister, and just send him home. There can be no balance, and this is shirk. The authority at the head, at the top, should be held by one person. The same person, head of the state and head of the government. This is Tawheed. And actually they have gone there. Only if they had, I have been saying it in my long lectures regarding the political system of Islam. If to this constitution of United States you add only three things. It becomes caliphate, Islamic caliphate. You add the objective resolution as we have in Pakistan. But there it is only theoretical, not practical. The sovereignty belongs to Allah. This should be the clause one. Clause two, no legislation can be done here at any level. Repugnant to the Quran and the Sunnah. Atiullah wa Rasul. Absolute obedience to the two. And number three, full citizenship of the state is held only by the Muslims. The non-Muslims, they are protected minority. Their lives, their honor, their belongings, they will be protected. They will have free hand in their personal law, in marriages, etc., etc., inheritance. They will be free to practice any religion they would like. But they will not be associated in the process of legislation, number one, and at the highest level of policy decisions. These, they are barred from that. If you add these three things, it becomes the most advanced khilafa on earth. But each one pill of this, you know, is very bitter to swallow. We have not been able to swallow it up till now in Pakistan. So what to speak of United States of America. But we have to work towards that end. Now, after these two ayat, we proceed further. And as I told you in the beginning yesterday, that a very big chunk of this Surah Nisa, it deals the affairs of the Munafiqoon without naming them. In the end, they will be named also. But in the beginning, you know, what we call Ru'e Sakhun, although they are not mentioned. But actually, these ayat are discussing the problems that were created or who were being faced by the Munafiqeen themselves. But let us first of all know who is the Munafiq. Who were the Munafiqeen of Medina at that time? There were certain people in Medina who accepted Islam. But they accepted not by thoroughly understanding what they are accepting. What are the implications of accepting Islam? If you are accepting Islam, you have to be totally obedient to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you have accepted Islam, you have to accept it, the whole divine law. If you have accepted Islam, you will have to sacrifice your lives and belongings and money for the cause of Allah, for jihad in the way of Allah. These are the implications of accepting Islam. People who understood it, those who accepted it at the face value, there was no problem with them. When they have decided in Allah, we have already sold ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this life doesn't belong to me. It's a sacred trust of Allah with me. Whenever he demands, I'll just give and lay down my life. Now all that I possess is not my property. I have sold it to Allah, already sold. In Allah, now this is, I'm only a custodian. Whenever Allah demands, I'll present it. Now there's no problem for them. But there were people who accepted Islam only because the whole clan or family or the tribe has accepted. So why to remain separate? Go ahead. You also accept Islam, embrace Islam. Or in an only emotional way, something strikes to you. Oh, it's good. I must have it. But you are not looking to the implications. What does it mean? What you will have to do after this? But in that, you know, a flooding of emotion, you have accepted it. 
But now when the implications come, they waver, they tremble, they start, you know, they are oscillating now. Muzab zabina bayna zalik, la ilaha ulai, wa la ilaha ulai. Ima mujhe roke hai, to khenche hai mujhe kufr. Kaaba mere piche hai, kalisa mere aage. What should I do? I have become Muslim. Well, I now I am required to go to fight in the way of Allah, risking my life. Oh, it's not an easy job. Every day the Prophet is saying, "Anfiqu fi sabillillah, anfiqu fi sabillillah, anfiqu fi sabillillah." Oh, but this wealth is very dear to me. I can't part with it. Now, what to do? So there were certain problems for them, and these peoples were. Oscillating between Kufr and Iman, we shall find, you know, this ayah, very beautiful ayah, in the later section of this very surah. Inna lazina amanu, summa kafaru, summa amanu, summa kafaru. They were oscillating between Iman and Kufr. Going two steps toward Iman, and then four steps this word, so that there are two steps towards Kufr. Now they are oscillating between Kufr and Iman. Muzab zabina bayan azalik, la ilaha ulai, la ilaha ulai. They were the munafiks. But still this disease, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also calls it a maraz. Fi qulubihim maradun fazadahumullahu marada. This is the disease. This disease was progressing gradually. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the beginning he is not naming them, not pointingly, you know, bringing them to the eyes of the society. But the problems, they are discussed here. Later it will be made clear who are they. But Shri Munafiqina Bianna Lahumina Lahi Azaban Hafima. Now give these glad tidings to these Munafiqeen. These Munafiqeen, glad tidings. That for them there is a very painful chastisement. So, but that will come in the later sections. Here. Now identify please three problems, main problems. The first problem for these Munafiqeen was. How come we have to obey Muhammad in every matter? It's not an easy job. Like I can't sacrifice my ego. Who's he? He's also a human being. In every matter I have to obey him. Number two. Going to Qatar. Hard. Not ready. Number three, and this was not for the munafiqeen of Medina. This was for the munafiqeen elsewhere. When you know hijra was made compulsory. Because now after hijra. Because the prophet had to take an initiative. A final offensive against kufr. Because the center of kufr was Mecca at that time. Now he had to have the offensive. Initiative. And for that purpose it was necessary that all the Muslims from all tribes, from every hook and corner of Arabia, they should converge at one point. So that the whole force is there available for the advance now. So this was, it was made imperative, compulsory. You have to migrate, you have to immigrate to Medina. Now people who were at Mecca, for some of them it became very hard. To leave their homes, families. They had accepted Islam. But they were not ready to part from their families and tribes. And that was also the case of other people from other tribes. They were scattered. The breadth and length and, you know, of, of the Arabian Peninsula. Now to leave their families, to leave their tribes, to leave the land of their ancestors. Where, you know, their ancestors were being buried. How can I leave? How can I go? So that was the third problem. So these three problems will be discussed, discussed now in the coming ayat. Let us hastily finish the first. Alam tara ila lazina yaz'amuna annahum amanu bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila bin qablik. Have you not considered, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the case of those? Yaz'amun, who think, who claim, annahum amanu bima unzila ilayka. That they have believed, come to believe in whatever has been sent down to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ta'unzila bin public, and also the book that were sent before. Now, they claim to be Muslims. When they are claiming that we believe in what has been revealed to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they have become Muslims. 
But what are they doing? Yuriduna yatahakamu ilatagut. They want to get the judgments of their disputes not from Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but from tagut. They want to go to the courts of the Jews. As I told you yesterday, Medina was still, you know, a mixed society. Three tribes of Jews were there. Then all, you know, also Khazraj people had not embraced Islam. There were still you people who, who had not embraced Islam or declared themselves to be Muslims. So there, then there were the Kahins and the sorcerers. Now a person says, I am a Muslim. But he takes his case, his dispute to be decided by a Jew. Or to be, to, to, he wants to take the judgment from some Kahin. What does it mean? He is not acting according to his faith. He should come to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam for all the disputes to be settled by him. He is the head of the state, I told you. And he is the chief justice. Yuriduna yatahakamu ila ta'ut. And what is ta'ut? Please understand. What is ta'ut? I explained last night also. Ta'a to exceed the limits. They say in Urdu, darya tohiyani par hai. When you know the river is flooding, it is overflowing its banks. Then we call Tohiyani. Now for human beings, the limits are the limitations placed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anybody who is crossing the limits, man yata'adda hudud Allah, he becomes a ta'ud. He is in Tohiyani. He has crossed his limits. He has crossed the limits of the Sharia. He becomes ta'ud. Only a person or an institution or a society or a state which acts upon Ya Yuhaladin Aman Watiullah Wati U Rasula Wulla Muribin Kum. This is the only exception. Every other society, every other institution, every other form of state is Tahut. And they want to go to Tahut to get their cases and disputes decided. Alam Tarayal Ladina Yadrumuna and Nahum Amanu Bimaun Dila Ilaika Bamaun Dila bin Kablik. يُرِيدُنَا يَتَحَاكَمُوا إِلَى الطَّاغُوتِ وَقَدْ أُمِرُوا أَنْ يَكْفُرُوا بِهِ And they have been ordered that they must deny and refute Taghut. Not to acknowledge them. Not to accept them. Not to get your decisions, your, your disputes decided by them. وَيُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ يُضِلَّهُمْ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا But Satan, this Iblis, he is bent upon Taking these people astray. And these people, these munafiqeen, who want their cases to be decided, not by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but by someone else, they are actually, they are the, they are the friends of shaitan. They are following shaitan. And when it is said to them, Ta'ala ila ma'adra Allah, wa'ila rasul. Now must be some brother, some Muslim, some true mu'min, he would have, he must have said, where are you going to get the decision, to get the judgment? You profess to be a Muslim. Why don't you come to the divine law? Ilama under Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the law. And we have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amongst us. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْا إِلَا مَا أَنزُلَ اللَّهُ وَإِلَا الرَّسُولُ رَأَيْتَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ يَسُدُّونَ عَنْكَ سُدُودًا You will see that these munafiqeen, they hold back from you. They refrain from you. They don't want to come to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because there is disease in their hearts. And that disease is the disease of the faq. فَكَيْفَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَتٌ What will happen if some infliction comes to them? Some affliction? Something unpleasant befalls them due to their wrong attitude? بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَدِيهِمْ Due to whatever their hands have earned. سُمَّ جَاوُوكَ يَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ Then they will return to you and they will swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala إِنَ رَضْنَا إِلَّا عِسَانًا وَتَوْفِيقًا If we went there, you know, O Prophet, O Messenger of Allah, our intentions were not wrong. We only wanted reconciliation. We only wanted something which is good and a reconciliation. We were not going there for any bad intentions. They are the people. Allah very well knows what is in their hearts. Far is on whom? So Prophet just ignore them. Why? It's not yet time to engage with them. Because 
you have yet to consolidate your own position at Medina. The authority and the jurisdiction of Islamic State has not been established fully up till now. So just ignore them. Don't try to punish them. Don't bring them to book. Just ignore them. Faridanhum wa izhum. But admonish them. Teach them. Give them advice. Wa qul lahum fi anfusayim qalam baliga. And say to them such words which penetrate into their hearts. This can have two meanings. Some advice which penetrates into your heart. Qal e baliq. And something which very well warns them. That their attitude is wrong. Although the words you know used by the Prophet ﷺ are very soft. But they can know what it means. Qawlam baliga. Wa maar salna min rasulinillah li yuta'abi ismillah. This is the principle. And we have never sent any messenger except to be obeyed by the command of Allah. If you have accepted Muhammad as messenger of Allah, you have to obey him anyhow. You can't refuse. He is the messenger of Allah. This is a very beautiful ayah in Surah Maryam. Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam said to his father, Ya abate inni qad jani min al-ilm ma'alam yatik fattabeni ahdeka siratun samiyya. Oh my dear father, to me a knowledge has come which didn't come to you. So you have to follow me. I will lead, to you, lead you to the right path. Now a son saying to the father. But the reason is, Wahi has come to me, not to you. Ya abate inni qajani min al-ilm ma'alam yatik fattabi'ni ahdeka siratun sabiyya. So whomsoever you accept as messenger of Allah, you have to obey him. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْزَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاهُوكَ وَاسْتَغْفَرُ اللَّهِ And if, when they had committed some sin, had they come to you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَاسْتَغْفَرُ اللَّهِ And they would have themselves asked the forgiveness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, or the Prophet and the Messenger would have also asked the forgiveness of Allah for them. لَوَجَدُ اللَّهَ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا They would have found Allah to be tawwab and raheem. He is the acceptor of tawbah. Always ready to accept tawbah. Waiting for his servant to make tawbah and return to him. And if he returns, he also returns with mercy. As I explained yesterday, last night. You know, tawbah is both sides. Tawwab, Allah is tawwab and the Lord's man is also tawwab. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجْرَ بَيْنَهُمْ Now this is the final verdict. So no! And by your Lord, لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ They will never be accepted as true moments. حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ Unless they make you the judge. فِي مَا شَجْرَ بَيْنَهُمْ In all the affairs, disputes which arise between them. ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ أَحَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتِ And then the decision and verdict that you give, they don't find in their hearts any displeasure. Although they have accepted, but even if there is a displeasure in the hearts, true iman is not there. This is the level of obedience. وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا And then they have to, to submit with total submission. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجَدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِّمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسُلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم